<laughs> so, um, on a, honestly, Paul's right. It, this is a session that um, uh, I want to really present uh, from the United States side. I'm using examples from iHeartRadio. Uh, I have uh, been stateside, actually, since um, kind of 2011, working with Ryan Seacrest, working with Elvis Duran, of course. We've created many shows you might be familiar with in that 10-year time, and that includes Bobby Bones, The Breakfast Club, and many other shows. Matter of fact, last night at the cocktail party, somebody said, how many shows are you working with? And I think I'm about 60. So uh, it's quite a bit. So, um, and I love every minute of it, because especially with what we've been through for the last couple of years, um, we have seen so much change in our, in, our, in our individual listeners' lives, with our audience, with our sort of like even our music. Um, the music kind of got stale there for a little bit, and the freshness is back in 2021. So personalities in the podcast and broadcast area era. And I want to be honestly, honest, we radio broadcasters belong in the podcasting space. The thing is, is there's some very big differences and subtle differences of both platforms, owning, a, a working with the radio station and then working with some podcasts, and I really hope to deconstruct some of those today. So I'm going to warn you, I was sitting in the very last section up there yesterday, and I could barely see what was up here, so uh, feel free to take your pictures. I'll step out of the way for those type slides that will come up, and for everybody at home, I'll try to read them with you uh, so you understand what I'm saying. So you ready to go? Here we go. <laughs> Next. In my opinion, I think that personalities are going through the biggest reset of their lives. And that means changing some of the things that they thought they needed to care about inside their programs, the way they prep, the way their audience listens, the space that their audience is listening, the devices have changed and everything else. So one of these, and it's not necessarily a struggle, but it's just as a sort of manage, representative of management and running, running stations and shows and being on the personality side, you really want to work with them to really understand how their show is going to be distributed in the future. It's not necessarily right now, like we absolutely at iHeartRadio with our current slate of personalities are completely concerned about what we call the mother station or the home brand. And then let's ease into delivering some of that content digitally. So this is a big important time for personalities and managers, programmers, and uh, broadcast groups. So with that said, I really want to point out <clears throat> a company by the name of Futuri in the United States has uh, just released what they call a white paper report that is really fascinating. And you can actually download the study, if you'd like, uh, there's that address there. I'll show it to you a little bit later. Just about what are people worrying about in the business? And most of the people were, were managers, owners, and uh, uh, producers, salespeople. And we could see that what worries broadcasters right now, so broadcast, broadcasters themselves, keeping the audience we have, as you can see, it's the number one concern we have, attracting a talented staff. This is a big thing. And if you notice up here, attracting the talented staff is at 88%, but the industry capability is down at 56%. So be on the lookout for talented people, talented producers, on-air talent, et cetera. So that is a bit of a concern with a lot of our uh, broadcast executives right now. Attracting younger audiences, it's the one big issue that's been kind of like a 10-year challenge with many stations and responding to competitors, and that one's really interesting because as you can see on this little slide, and I'll walk you through it, uh, keeping in touch with disruptors and other competitors, it's 84% uh, they're worried about, but 50%, do they have the industry capability to match that need? So that's not good. So uh, one of the things that I really do sort of stress with my talent and the teams that I work with is to be very aware of the broadcast and podcast business. Start learning the business. Keep moving forward, but be smart about it. it has to be smart about how you're measured, et cetera, and you'll step into the space naturally. So without further ado, I just want to talk about a little bit of the old days. 
So traditional customer life cycle, we used to see things advertised and we would go buy it. We would see it and discover it and we'd maybe meet somebody, go to the store and meet a salesperson and actually purchase it. Well, it's not true today with the digital customer lifestyle. <laughs> They want to check everything out online, they want reviews, they want to watch the mobile ad, they want to see user videos. It is really, really a sort of crazy world to decide that you like that brand right now. So it's very important that we understand the mindset of our poor listener right now being overwhelmed with all these audio choices that are coming, just very similar to the, even the, the new digital television space of Amazon Prime and Netflix and Sky, I saw an ad yesterday for something called Sky Screen, I think it was. They have their oh, Sky Glass, and that's their TV business. So I thought that was, it was all built into a TV. Something new, anyway. So the digital lifestyle of the, uh, of the cu uh, customer lifestyle is very complicated right now. So as broadcasters and podcasters, we need to cut through that noise. And we sort of figured out over the last couple of years, you know, let's talk about pandemic sort of discoveries, is one-on-one -on -one relationships with people were the most important things we can do. In fact, one of the, um, we have a research company with iHeartMedia that came up with a bunch of reasons, and we asked them, why radio? And one of the big answers was for companionship. So I feel less lonely. And that was such an amazing finding in, uh, uh, almost a year ago that we really realized that people are coming to connect to the world and join the world. So with that being said, we've realized that that's going to be our message to cut through with that new digital mindset of the listener. So in the old days, broadcast content, in the old days is really like five years ago, where we would take broadcast content and, oh, let's put that piece and put it on the website and they can listen to it later. And then all of a sudden phones come on and you could go, oh, there it is, click and listen to it now. So, so really broadcast content was broadcast content. Maybe some of the pieces or the full show would be replays and things like that. And that was basically the sort of mantra of three, four, five, six years ago. Nowadays, think omni-channel and again, this is inside that Futuri study, if you want to download it. And it really does go to show here the real world of how listeners are joining the audio space right now. It is not broadcast. It is not podcast. It is everything. So it's uh, video on demand, websites, social media, smart speakers, t uh, smart TVs, blogs. S some are... Uh, over the top, some are the free, sub, free and subscription, and of course the mobile. So guess what? We need to be everywhere. I saw some conversations yesterday that were like, well, what about if they, our product was only on one website? We really don't believe that we distribute everywhere, as you'll see in a sec. So there's the world we live in right now of how things have kind of changed, right? So talent, this really is a session for you. This is not for managers, owners, businesses. Talent, please begin to adjust your mindset and think very differently about how your consumer will use your product. So if you've been on a radio show for 10 years, 15 years, like Elvis Duran, 25 years, you know, he is very much aware at how things are changing and how that content is being um, delivered to his client, to his customers, to his listeners. So he concentrates on the must-haves. So sometimes we really focus and we kind of like what we call, uh, we, you know, we take away so much stuff, we create so much content that it might be too much. So we prune that whole list of content activity down a little bit. So we call them the must-haves. That could be the entertainment, your features, the connection stuff that you have with your listener, one of the big features on the Elvis Duran show, if you've listened to it recently, is called Three Things You Need to Know, and that is just the three things you need to know. This is what's happening in the world. We're okay. There's a fire here. This happened last night. We're okay, that kind of thing. Curation of music, curation of content is very key. Embrace freshness, newness, being different is key. And the reason why we say that is because that creates addiction because they go, wait, I missed it. I didn't know that happened yesterday. They want to sort of come back into your show. So 
make sure that your, your content includes something different, something new each day you broadcast. And establish an interactive environment. Again, if you listen to some of the shows we have in the States, you hear listeners. You, you listen, you know, some of the people on the shows will talk about posts and texts and things they saw on social media, DMs, etc. So whatever that is, that interactive environment is really kind of saying, come join our party. We're the ones that are really fantastic right now, and we really want you to join, and you are welcome at our table and in our little club here. So this is a hard thing to work with people sometimes. They come in and they do a routine show. We do the news, we do the benchmarks, we do the funny stuff, we do this feature, we do a, uh, a, a phone prank, let's say. But start thinking of your show as episodes. And I will tell you that, you know, these days, when listeners are listening to your show, they are going to something like this. This is directly from the iHeartRadio website. And for example, there's Elvis. He really believes in his on-demand channel right now. So I'll step up here and show you guys. So this is the day we got social media back. That was October 5th. Everybody knows what happened that day. Facebook and Instagram, and then we have the day we hung out with an astronaut, the day we got Fancy Like, that new song, and the day we saved a mouse. I want to show you here, this is a new show that we started this year in Tampa, and it's called The Joe Show. Anybody hear of it? No. So The Joe Show is a brand new radio station. Oh, a couple people have heard The Joe Show, <laughs> okay. Uh, or they're waving to their friends to come sit over here. They're right over here, guys. <laughs> so, what we do here is we create little highlights on his website, and we call them the snackable pieces. The pieces that the listener can kind of understand the show and join the show and realize this show is for them in pieces. So it's the new way we brand shows, by trying to get them to listen to us once, and listen to us again. And then our app has this, is very smart, and it says, hey, have you heard this on the Joe Show? Listen now. So we actually interact with that user that sampled our station, our show, and we go, this was funny today. I hope you, you know, if you want to hear this again, that sort of thing. So we have a show that's very well established, Thinking Episodes, and then we have a show that is kind of one day at a time with really special, unique listening, and we try to get listeners to become addicted to our show down there in Tampa, Florida, and on the app. The Listen Now button is absolutely critical. You've got to swipe on, punch that button, and listen live. Th for many people that know me, <laughs> you know that I don't start a meeting unless you understand who your target listener is and you understand what your brand are. We don't even air check yet. We're talking about the listener. We are talking about the product. Understanding the ideal listener is crucial. What does the target listener care about? Even what they don't care about, what they hate, what they love, what they like is good, but sometimes when you talk about what they hate, that makes you kind of bond with somebody, and that's how a brand is born, is when you really sort of get connected to the listener on some of the things that you can relate to in your life. The second piece is what entertains your listener. So who knows what that is? And you can figure that out and you can play with it. And now in the digital, with digital research and digital um, matrix and uh, dif different digital recaps that come in on your show, you might see that you might have five likes on something. Then the next day it's three likes. Then the next day it's one like and you go, let's not do that anymore. Why are we doing this feature? Nobody's listening to it. So that's very interesting to sort of watch how something grows and how something is just not that interesting to the listener anymore. Excuse me, I'm losing my, from that party last night. <laughs> I've lost my voice. So master who your listener is and master what your show is all about and be very, very specific. Now this is a show I've recently worked with that has this filter, and it's a lot. And there's some shows that I only have five filters on, but this one is a sort of famous show, and we have such a combination of, of all of these ingredients inside our show. So then when I air check them, I sit there and I say, hey, did, did you know, women win? 
There, you know, we're, you know, women were included. This is very different from our competitors. We have a positive outlook. You know, so many people write down, oh, we're positive. Isn't that great? You have to have a positive outlook. No one's happy right now. No one's positive, positive. And if you are, you're really, where have you been for the last two years? You know, but a positive outlook is really key. Fun, life-loving, connected, dependable topicality. What's new for me today? I need to join the world. I need to get my day started in a, in a morning, with a morning show. But if somebody wants to listen to your show a little bit later in the day, they still get that feeling of what's happening in the world. Personal versus private, I really believe heavily in role work. You'll see in a second. So role work means that intimate relationship between you as a friend and the listener as a friend. Empathetic, underdog, we don't have these, ah, oh, we're number one anymore. We are the best, we did that. We talk about our flaws, we talk about things that make us vulnerable. We have a viral vibe, but we unpack the world for you. So that's the filter for one show. Here's solid role work, I know. When I was sitting up there in the back, I was like, oh, you can't read this, so let me get out of the way if you want to take a picture. But here's like a cast of characters on one show. So we have the host, a co-host, the funny guy, we call him the sniper, another co-host, an often on-air executive producer. But who is part of our show? Our listener, and where they fit into the big picture of our show. So make sure that you outline your role work and then how the listener participates, participates with you. Who are you and what do you want to be known for? I'm married, I'm a family man, I'm single, I'm dating, just had a baby, all those little things. That's what you want to know about your friends? I just broke up, I just divorced. You know, there's a couple shows that came back from the pandemic divorced and you're like, okay, didn't know that. You know, thank you, I'm glad you're good, you know? The, I mean, you know, it's like when people start sharing little tidbits of their lives, you become addicted to them, and that is what we want. Authenticity, real communication, honest, honest conversations. So here I am telling you, okay, take your podcast show, take your broadcast show and go podcast. Now, you know, it's not that easy please don't brand extend too fast. Things really take time. So it's almost like a relationship. If you have a first date, a second date, a third date, maybe you might get married in six months, maybe you might get married in four years. Things take time and so does your relationship with your listener. So really judge yourself gently on how you can brand extend into the podcast and the digital space of, um, of your product. Sharon Daster's here from Z100 in New York. I'm so happy to see her this week. And we've known each other for many years. And here's an example of a brand that has just completely evolved every five years. Sharon, are you here? I hope so. Yeah. Woohoo! What's up? Uh, and uh, she was the program director. I mean, you know, she had weekly meetings with the, with the programming staff. That include people in promotion. Everybody at Z100 was always on the same page with what the station was about every week. It was Thursdays at 11, right, Sharon? <laughs> so the five-year cycle of a big radio station like the station in New York, and it didn't start with Elvis. It started with Scott Shannon. Then it went into John Lander then Elvis and Elliot, and then Elvis kind of evolved here, as you can see, into what we are today. So in every single space, it needed to be gentle. We evolved, we're gonna change that, we're gonna freshen this up. So you adapt, adjust, change, refresh, refocus, and modernize a brand like Z100 or a show like the Elvis Duran Morning Show. That's Elvis calling, say hi. <laughs> I want you to meet The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club is a basically a brand new show that, uh, actually I hate to say it, it's 11 years old now, it will be 11 years in December, and they were three very unique people. You know, they, uh, DJ Envy came from our competitor, Hot 97 in New York, Angela Yee was working for XM Sirius at the time, and Charlemagne the God was working for Wendy Williams in Philadelphia and then New York, and he was part of that show. So they were a group of people that were kind of a little bit of an arranged marriage, but
but they were a unit. They knew each other, they liked each other. Um, there were two managers at Power 105 that had many meetings with them and really sorted it out before they said, hey Dennis, I think we got a show. Can you come in and do your role work, your foundation stuff with? So peep, the management really loved this crazy new style of, um, of, this, of the show Breakfast Club and put them together this way. And it's so funny, it's like, you can't read all this, but I just love this last line. We don't do a show, we just do us. And that, that alone, 10 years ago, was the beginning of the journey that the Breakfast Club have. No one imagined what was going to happen with the Breakfast Club, and I'll be honest with you, I learned from them so much about the digital space because they were in it, they were living it. It was like a culture for them to be in on YouTube and Twitter at the time and really grow their audience. So at the Breakfast Club, social media kind of came first with Twitter and YouTube, and this is some recent posts that they've put up. So they do everything they do for the broadcast. They show up every morning at 6 a.m. If they're in another city, maybe in Miami, if DJ Envy has an event there or something like that, he's there at 6. If Charlemagne the God has to be uh, in uh, LA for, to, to meet a celebrity or something like that, he is there at three in the morning. This is one of the most disciplined shows on the planet, I think. The Breakfast Club really takes care of the mothership, and the mothership is Power 105. So they, as you can see, are constantly tweeting, posting, letting those new listeners know how to join their show. So some of the highlights for everybody in the back is why some of the most talented people are stuck in the hood. So that was a conversation they had, and it's, you can see that it's very culture-driven. We have a powerhouse event, you know, just like Jingle Ball, their event is powerhouse. We have a couple of guests that came in on the show, so they're posted, you can listen to it now. Charlemagne and his wife celebrated his fourth child, happened to be now for his fourth uh, baby girl, and we post that up there. So it's roll work, it's radio station work, it's come join our party, and in this case, this is another celebrity that they all took a picture with, doing their thing in front of the logo. They take care of the Mothership brand. More importantly, is the Breakfast Club has spread into all kinds of brand extensions, and they didn't do this overnight. I swear to God, it took one at a time, and now they really have what they lovingly call side hustles. So in this case, Charlemagne the God has his own TV show now on Comedy Central. Episode three is... Uh, just was released last Friday, and it's called The God's Honest Truth with Charlemagne the God. So, a little plug for his show. Angela Yee absolutely cares about women, women business leaders, women in real estate, women making money, women getting a seat at the table, so she is very much involved what she calls here Black Entrepreneur's Day. So she's letting her listeners know how they can join that effort. Charlemagne has written a book called Shook One, it's his second book, Read His First. That's the story of his evolution in, in the radio business. But he's also, the second book is about mental health. So he's very much involved with anything mental health in the community. DJ Envy has got an event. He's a DJ, so he might be showing up at a, at a club, or he's doing one of his car shows. Hey, guys, we all love cars. This is our thing. Come join our party. Brand extension, invitations of events, but the radio station and the content on the show is paramount, and that comes first. So the Breakfast Club podcast diverged, uh, had all kinds of diversions. So the Breakfast Club, you can hear the whole show each day, so it's online, just download it. Ask Ye is a sort of like, hey, I'm stuck in a real weird situation, I've got this boss at work, or my husband, my boyfriend, or things like that. So she's kind of like a real, you know, good advice sister to many friends, many listeners. So she does a feature called Ask E. Now we created a podcast for that. Donkey of the day, 810 every morning, 805 now. Um, and it's Charlemagne just calling out the Donald Trumps and the idiots of the day, basically, that pop up each day. And it's a, it's a real nice, isolated, snackable feature that has really grown the Breakfast Club into being what it is today. Finally, the rumor report is just like, hey, what's happening in it's like a magazine, a gossip magazine, for, uh, the, um, for the hip-hop artists and the hip-hop music scene, and, and, uh, and, and that's called The Room Report. That's its own isolated podcast. So, 
Charlemagne has created another podcast called The Brilliant Idiots within the last three years. Angel Yee has a whole nother service that's, you know, called The Lip Service. You need to listen to it. I'm not going to explain it up here. <laughs> and the Casey crew is about DJ Envy and his wife and life in his family of, of four. So you see that he posts quite a bit about his life. There's a TV show in the works that he is going to brand extend as well about the crazy family of the Casey crew, because he's DJ Envy, his last name is Casey, the Casey crew. So that's one thing, but now evolution comes. We're in one year of something called the Black Effect Network, and this is Charlemagne just feeling it out. He knew it. He's one of our, now that, remember this session is about talent. Talent had this inkling that listeners wanted to be connected more to the audio world, and he created, he's majority owner with iHeart as a minority stake on the Black Effect Network. So the Black Effect Network is just celebrating a year this month. We have 28 podcasts released. We have um, a, a, a new and established uh, talent are coming to the, to the brand, and it's from a black perspective. It's created by black voices, and it's hosted by black voices, and it cares about black people in the United States. More importantly, it's massive. So that hunch that Char Charlemagne the God had, he's talent, into this completely huge new effort called the Black Effect Network. We have 12 and a half million down daily, do monthly downloads across the network. We have number one shows on the Apple uh, download list, and we have an incredible amount of social media buzz and what that social media buzz does is it cross-promotes all of the shows that are available on, the, on Black Effect. So you can see that it has other talent, too, that have come to the channel that Charlemagne believes in that are creating another new fan base through this network. More importantly, everybody's invited. So that we're starting to do stage events, event press, and all that kind of stuff. We do, we, anytime that there's a... Uh, a recording of a podcast, let's say. We invite our listeners to come in a theater. They pay to come. You can watch, the, you, you can watch it and interact with them live in, from the comfort of your own home to digitally as well. So they get into a little bit of subscription. So look at this. This Breakfast Club, 11 years ago, has blossomed into the podcast world, social media world, and now a network. And they are shocked. And it's just, and now they have events like car shows, entrepreneur events, uh, Black-owned businesses uh, has just been an, an amazing effort in the last, like, I'd say seven years growing into these uh, side pieces, as they say here. <laughs> um, the podcast revolution is here, so talent, please, embrace, embrace the podcast world. But let me tell you, it's growing faster. Uh, uh, half of Americans are already in the game. They have discovered how they can listen to podcasts on their phone, in their cars, some dashboards have it. You know, they're really, the, the technology is a little bit keeping us in check with all of their revolutions and things that have changed throughout the years. The podcast revenue, I heard a little bit of a conversation yesterday about revenue. It's in, I'll show you some numbers in a sec, but we've just broken the $1 billion barrier this year. And then now everybody is getting into the game of podcasting and now there's more choice, more opportunity, but go back to the foundation, go back to the roles, go back to the target listener. If you really know who you're talking about, how and where, you've got yourself a hit podcast, and it could grow. This is where I'm going to stand out of the way here, because it's, when I was up there, I went, oh my God, I can't see all that. The digital content is the primary content, and this is how we work with our personalities. So we're constantly tell them, not everything is ready for digital. There are some things that actually belong on broadcast. So you need to decide what goes where and be strategic about it, be smart about it. You could make a guess, but if you monitor the numbers, you can actually see where you know, it, listeners aren't taking to it or they don't care. So that's okay, get rid of it, don't do that anymore. But so much stuff t t t plays into that slide earlier about how listeners are communicating with, with radio groups and radio broadcasters and shows through so many different ways, whether it's links, podcasts, the FM dial, smart speaker, smart TVs, 
et cetera. So podcasts, sub brands, and blogs, please. I'm stopping for a second because this is such a big plea. Make sure your show, your host show's names, your radio station, where you broadcast basically from is findable. There are so many times where we go to our own stations and our own shows, and we might Google one of our biggest shows or go on to uh, any of the other uh, search engines, and we would say Bobby Bones, and a podcast comes up from our affiliate in Australia. So it's like, no, I want to listen to it live, and they get real frustrated. Listeners become frustrated about what they're actually looking for. So be specific to your listeners on how they can find you and test yourself to make sure you are findable. Also make sure that you're getting credit for ratings. You know, we are very lucky right now because all of our podcasts and broadcasts have tones that Nielsen is actually detecting and that's how we're getting our ratings right now is through these detectable tones in many, many markets. Some markets aren't in this ratings effort, but make sure that you get credit for your ratings and be all about your views, your posts, your likes, your unique visitors, etc. And that engagement number grows and grows and grows within each week. Snackable is the big thing that if you have a new brand or a brand that you're really trying to have people sample, give free samples. Tell people where you are. Try this, listen to that. If you like this, you'll like that. It's just like Netflix, just like Amazon when you're buying books. Try to get your snackable content available in another feed sometimes. Be ready for routine. Look, I have to be honest with you. Listeners are craving routine right now. They want to be back in their routine. They might not be back in their offices, but they are really happy to reconnect with the radio show, ex exactly like what I said, to make them feel less lonely or to, oh, good, something else I can follow along on a daily basis and gives me everything I need to know. So routine is very good, and I, I tell a lot of shows this, stop the contesting as being the only thing you got. Focus on your content, because if you are just focusing on contests, it's over by that hour, even though you gotta love the chainsaw story yesterday from you know, Chicago. <laughs> but that's every Friday, and it's teaching listeners to listen to that station every Friday to win a free chainsaw. But that's different, that's something that is snackable, that is really talked about and builds a brand. Consistency is sexy. If you've got a feature that people like, like Donkey of the Day, own it. That is something that listeners will take to. Invent shows for longevity. Perfectionism, being too perfect is actually killing some shows. They love the, oops, that happened, I spilled water, oh my god, this happened, and oh, we're five minutes late for that, sorry, but that's life, right? And embrace the struggle to keep up, and it is a lot. Talent, it's hard. Embrace the struggle to keep up digitally. Make sure your show is entertaining. It's a lot to do in 24 hours. Difference between podcast and broadcast, what makes sense for broadcast and what broadcasters need to do is they've got to build their brand. The first thing that, they, that listeners need to know is the name of the show, the name of the station, the name of your frequency maybe. You know, then you've got to teach people how to listen. So there you go, you're taking the bright pictures. <clears throat> Take this to your teams and really work with them to go and air check them and go, you didn't say your name. You didn't say the name of the show. When was the last time you said how listeners can find you? This could be the very first time a listener is listening to your station. Why your show? What's the difference? So you saw earlier that I said, you know, we curate your life for you. We give you three things you need to know. So own that. That's one of the reasons why people like the Elvis Duran Morning Show is because he curates the day's news and the day's events, and they talk about it amongst themselves like friends. Routine building content, what is your difference from other radio competitors? Remember, one of the big things is competition right now. It's coming out everywhere. You have to really be proud of your product and do that in a very humil humil with humility. Show that, oh, so thank you for listening. As you can see, gratitude is at the bottom here. Gratitude is one of those secret ingredients that people are too cool to do sometimes. And I know that I have this problem with a lot of my shows. Saying thank you 
And thank you for listening, and I hope you liked it today. It's my pleasure to give you this. You know, if it's individual and personal, give gratitude. But what, that, what you do with that connection is you tease for the next show and you create that addiction. Aggressive social media strategies. And remember, with broadcast, listen now, content matters. Anytime somebody comes to a radio station, they want to be plugged into what's happening in the world right now. So that just changed, no? Here we go. Uh, what is, oops, sorry. Do you know what? What makes sense for podcasts? So my slide's wrong here. So everybody, I apologize. I'll reload this later for you guys to take to your stations. So what makes sense for a podcast? Okay, please, I'm sorry about that red line. What is so special about your podcast? What is the difference? We don't need the branding there already because they've already found you. So you might as well take that up a notch and be very, very special and unique already. So what is your detailed strategy with your podcast? Why do listeners like you, you and the team, and then, then re reestablish your brand with the listeners as they're listening to the podcast, how they've detailed, the, how they found the, the download and the details it took to get to it. The conversations become more than just get to the point radio. It is now, we want to hear a little bit more about your life. How's your fourth child? Let me, t t let me hear about that car show. What was the biggest car that you had at the event? Listeners love to go to the podcast for more information, more detail, more of that humanity. Gratitude and teasing is very important again. So please, you know, thank a listener for joining. If you have a text or a listener, let them say their name again. People go, what? They talked about me. That's amazing. It's just like liking something. If you like somebody, a listener's post, and they see that thumbs up from the breakfast club, their mind's blown. They're thrilled to see that. So that's why brands take off now because it's so intimate and connected to the listener. And again, uh, aggressive social media. So again, what makes sense for podcast? And I got to get that changed. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't notice that. So at iHeartRadio, we love our radio stations. Okay. As you can see here, we have 276 million listeners on a yearly basis that are coming to our broadcast stations. We're growing our podcast business. We have 30 million now, kind of like addicted and in the system and all that kind of stuff. But we use our powerful brands to promote also the podcast and where to find us on the radio. So very happy to be part of that iHeart brand here. And I will tell you, there was mentioned last night, we have our, many of our competitors, stations from Cumulus, stations from Town Square, and other broadcasters are part of um, the iHeart radio system too, just like TuneIn, and now we're part of TuneIn, and um, you know, we just want to be everywhere, and that's really kind of like wherever our listeners are, that's where we want to be. Our podcast world has all kinds of genres, and we have categories, and I'm always telling talent, I go, create your own category. Don't just be one of the many in science and tech or music or parenting and family. You know, really kind of find something that might create, you know, car aficionados, golfers, you know, whatever that is. Let's get you, get, let's have you be the one show to listen to in that category. We're very proud of this news. This just came out last week that we are the number one publisher of content in the United States with 281,000, no, 281. Million? No, I don't know how to read that. <laughs> uh, global streams and downloads right now through our podcast app of our podcast. So we're the number one publisher of content right now in the United States and throughout the world. NPR, Wondery, as you can see, kind of falls in here. Um, we, um, uh, so in the United States, over a million downloads, 30 million U.S. monthly unique visitors. So that means listeners are still coming into our ecosystem to really sample what we have. They've heard about it. They want to come in for a look. They're like not the early uh, arrivals. They're people that are just getting to the party now. And it's not late. It's just in time, as we keep saying. And then 282 million global podcast downloads, as you can see from various sources here. So distribute everywhere. You know, um, if you have a brand that really thinks, oh, exclusively on this and that site, they're not going to download it. We're everywhere. We go to Breaker, Spreaker, 
Pandora, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, our podcasts are there. So we go distribute to everywhere. We believe in everything free, no paywalls. Is it easy to consume? That's all we care about. The more platforms we're on, what listeners use, great. The more re relevance that we have with shows, whether or not it's in a live morning show like the Elvis Duran Show, or it's one of our podcasts, or one of our star podcasts, like, um, uh, like you just saw with the Red Table Talk, it's really relatable. They always have special guests. Convenience is the most important thing. Wherever they are, inside their car, on their smart TVs, wherever, th we have that iHeartRadio app in the corner, ready to go. So anywhere, everywhere, wherever our listeners are, we really try to be there. If Samsung comes out with a new device, I can surely bet that Bob Pittman, our uh, CEO, is making sure there's a team headed to Seoul, Korea, to make sure that the iHeartRadio app is embedded on that new device. So <clears throat> ease of consumption is really key. Companionship and personality is vital. It's becoming more important than actually some of the music styles and music, music uh, uh, products that are available through the app. So we're now trying to, this is the, the talent part. It's like, please, use your talent. Be you. Just do you. And get on the app with you know, overcoming a lot of these different things that are what makes you so special and so unique. Extend in the podcasting, please, talent. You know, um, I have some that are all in, and they've been all in, and I have several shows that are just like, no, I really want to concentrate on the FM, and that's fine, I get it. Let's just do the, let's do, let's get your show on, let's get people addicted, and you'll see. So I have to handhold them through some of the numbers games of like, see, they're addicted, you're getting some hits. This is making the show more famous, more popular. So talent needs to extend into this. So please, gently assist your talent into getting into the space. And one of the things that we are lucky about, uh, with is that many of our personalities um, are happy to be part of that iHeart umbrella. So with iHeart festivals and things like that. This is our, our CEO, Bob Pittman. And just a couple weeks ago, he had this headline it says, iHeart, um, you know, is all about advertising. So we're free. We want our user experience to be free. And now, as subscription services and everything else blend in, you know, we're like, that's us, though. We're free. We want to keep it free. We don't want to charge you money. Here's an ad. Here's something that plays before your product, that kind of thing. So advertising is the answer. Paul, I need a few, just to a little bit. Tips for talent, Dennis, take pictures of this fast. If you overrun, Dennis, you'll be cut off by all the people watching at home. I know. Tips for talent, I'm going to go fast, take the pictures. Everybody ready? I won't walk you through it, but build your character on and off air with your talent. I see people have their phones up. One more. Next. Stories, connection, companionship, and entertainment is what makes listeners listen and find you addicting. It's not the music you play. It's not the contests you have. It's personalization like a friend. So these little ingredients make your show special. Do you want that again? I'm sorry. These people are taking pictures. You guys good? Tell me when. Next. Resetting the conversation really lets listeners in on the conversation. So tell them your name. Tell them what you're talking about. Reset frequently through, the, um, through your conversations on air and off air. And I'm telling you this for managers. Please don't coddle personalities. Too often managers choose to do nothing. Please jump in the water. It's amazing. Come after this. Understand the snacker. Talked about that a little bit. The snacker is the person that might. The Breakfast Club was built on really sort of like it became famous because of YouTube and YouTube listeners because they had so many guests. They were snackers that are now addicted to Power 105 and all of our broadcasts there. So take that target. Make it a friend. Grow it into a click. You got a group, a crowd, and it grows into an audience, and no listener or no person is alienated. Be specific with your target listener. This is a station, I'm not gonna tell you where, but there's three other slides I could show you, I'm not. But who is your target? What is her name? What does she care about? She hangs with her friends. She's mixed race. She has a boyfriend for now. You know, she's in her mid-20s. 
Know your target listener and be very detailed about the nuances of your target listener. Master your content filter. Every time you open up that mic, you have one brand new listener, so welcome them these days. Even like with Twitch, you see somebody would come on on Twitch and go, hi, I don't know what this show's about. Hey, everybody, welcome Mike. He's living in Seattle and, you know, and he's a new listener. So really get into that habit. If you don't know what's coming up next, the listener won't either. And that is teasing. You've got to let listeners know what's coming up, what's happening tomorrow, what's coming up next week. Let listeners know how to join your party. And the biggest thing is unfamiliar is the enemy. So if nobody knows your name, nobody knows how to find you, you're not searchable, Googleable, <laughs> Amazonable, <laughs> and they can't find you, they'll never find you. So please overcome unfamiliarity by getting your brand out, have it snackable, use social media to really kind of like increase that brand. So thank you. <laughs>